Hi everyone, welcome to introductory Python tutorials with a special focus on image processing. In this video, let's uh, have a quick look at the difference between upsampling and convolutional transpose operation and that can be in 2D. Both of these can be in 2D and 3D. And these get commonly used in units and also in other architectures like autoencoders and uh, generative adversarial networks. If you don't know what we are talking about when it comes to UNET, I definitely recommend watching the last two, three videos where we talked about autoencoders and how units are very similar to autoencoders, except for the skip connection part. Now on the decoder part, which by definition means you have a smaller vector in terms of machine learning. In the encoder part, you're going from a large image to a smaller vector. And the decoder part, you're going from a small uh, tensor, I should say, a smaller tensor back to a large image. While you're doing that, how do you upscale your, or uh, upsample your image, right? So going from a smaller size to a larger size, this is what we're talking about. There are two options, uh, primary options, I should say. One is upsampling. You can upsample your image, as the name suggests, it's sampling, meaning you're taking the pixel values and you're uh, extending them in a way. And you can also perform transpose operations. And let's see what the difference is between these two. First of all, uh, just to remind you again, the unit that we're talking about, you have an encoder path, right? So why is the dimension size going down as you go down? That's because when you apply the max pooling operation with the size of two by two, right? That's exactly what we are doing with this red arrow. That decreases the size of your image by half. So you're going from 256 to 128 to 64 to 32 to 16. On the decoder side, we need to do exactly the opposite, go from 16 to 32 and so on. This is where uh, uh, we can actually apply our upsampling 2D or conv 2D transpose. So now let's have a closer look. Now that we know what the context is, let's have a closer look of each of these. So uh, there are two types, like, I, uh, like we already mentioned, that can be used. Upsampling 2D is very similar to max pooling, except it's obviously opposite to max pooling, where uh, in upsampling 2D, we are repeating the rows and columns of the input. I'll, I'll explain that in a visual way and also in a programmatic way in a minute. Conv2D transpose, as the name suggests, is a convolution operation. Okay, so there is a multiplication going on. Upsample is just repeating the data. So if you have, uh, if you have, uh, we'll get to that in a second. Let me not, uh, uh, you know, try to give you abstract details, but uh, we'll, I have a visual explanation of this. And Conv2D transpose, if you, if you want to figure out which one to use, I haven't seen much of a difference personally using either of these, but Conv2D transpose has been reported to result in checkerboard artifacts. Yeah, but not much of a comparison between these two is out there when it comes to the literature. Maybe I'm missing something. If you guys know uh, any comparison paper between these two, please do leave that as part of the comments. But uh, to me, uh, both are equally well, uh, I want to prefer Conv2D transpose because that way you're also learning some, uh, you know, uh, the, the Conv2D transpose actually learns and upsampling, there is nothing to learn there. Okay, again, hopefully in the next five to 10 minutes, things makes a bit more sense. Uh, so let me start by talking about upsampling first. Okay, so let's say this is my input image. It's just a three by three pixel. Okay, now I would like to perform two by two upsampling so this is basically repeating your uh, pixels two by two times. So in this case, my one image is just my one pixel, sorry, of this red square is four red squares and then the four pink ones and then the yellow ones and so on. So you can see the image right here is one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Six by six. And we start with three by three. So the size doubled because we are using two by two upsampling. This is exactly why we're in our unit decoder, we're going from 16 to 32 to 64 and so on because the size doubles if you apply two by two operation. So upsampling is easy to understand. You're just copying. There is nothing to train here. You take a matrix, you take like numbers, you repeat them. When it comes to convolution 2D transpose, again, let's work with the same input. So it makes it a bit uh, easy for us to understand. This gets converted into something that uh, that looks like this on, uh, you know, uh, let, let me explain this. So 
This is a convolution operation. So we need to define what the kernel size is going to be. In this example, my kernel size is one by one. That's it, just one by one. But then my stride is two by two. That means I'm going two steps at a time. That's why there is a spacing right there, okay, in between these two, because my stride is two by two. So think of this as very similar to two by two upsampling there. It's creating this dark space, but it's not filling it with anything. Here, it's filling it with these, these uh, pixel values in upsampling. Here, it's not filling with uh, uh, this information right there. Now, because this is convolution operation, there is also something called uh, weights that you can define. What are weights? Weights are basically the values within the convolutional uh, filter of size one by one in this example. So I'm going to put a weight of one. That means my output is going to have the same values as my input wherever there is this value. I hope this makes sense. Again, we'll, we'll write a single line or a few lines to understand this a bit better, but I just want to make sure visually we are on the same page. Upsampling, very simple, right? Two by two upsampling, it's just copying this. Convolution operation, you need to know what convolution is. Please watch the video on convolution here. Convolution is you have your image and you have a kernel and you're multiplying the kernel at every pixel in your image and you're moving that kernel. By how much? In this case, my kernel size is just one or one by one and I'm moving it two steps at a time. That's why you have from here, it's going one, two, one, two, and then also in this direction, one, two, that's why you have this space. Okay, right now the space is filled with all values of zero, but then as you learn, the space can be filled with new values. That's that's basically what Con2D transpose is. Okay, so now uh, let's use simple Python code to understand the differences a bit better. So let's jump onto our collab. And this code I'm going to share, so please pay attention to what we are talking right now. So first of all, let's uh, demonstrate upsampling 2D, and then we can we can do con 2D transpose. So for that, I'm going to import uh, TensorFlow sequential. So we'll create a small model only with upsampling layer. Okay. So that's why let's go ahead and import upsampling, and of course input so we can define the input. Okay. What's our data? Normally we work with images, but in this case uh, we want to understand exactly what upsampling is. So let's define our own image of three by three pixels. And I filled our image or NumPy array with values of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we can figure out if things are repeating, okay? So this is my X, which is my image for now. What is image? It's just NumPy array, right? So now I'm going to reshape it so it's in the right shape to get into my neural network. So let's run this line and then run this line. So my shape is basically it takes my three by three input and I have one image of three by three size and it is single channel, right? I don't have many channels right there. That's what the input is. This is ready to go into my neural network once I define it. So what's my neural network or my model? Well, I'm going to use sequential method and my input is of size this, which is three by three by one, right? Of size this is my input, okay? And then I'm going to add an upsampling layer with a size of two by two. So we already saw from the image that if we have a size of two by two upsampling, our image dimensions double. So what I'm going to expect as a result from here is one, six, six, one. It's going to double, right? The, for each of these. Uh, so let's go ahead and define this and we'll see the result in a second. So here it is, uh, the summary of my model. You can see that the summary already that it's going to give me an output of uh, one image, right? None here means we have one image, six by six single channel images. And how many parameters are there to train zero? There is nothing. Again, uh, let me repeat this. Upsampling, there is nothing to train. Okay, so the value is uh, uh, zero, number of trainable parameters. So if you are worried about increasing the number of trainable parameters and then make your uh, making your network slow, you can go ahead and use uh, upsampling. But then always remember this upsampling as part of a unit is applied after a convolution operation. So it's not like you are increasing it dramatically. Uh, with convolution 2D transpose, you have the convolution and transpose kind of built in. So uh, so you still have to tra train almost similar number of, uh, 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 of, of parameters. Okay, so far we have done nothing. We just defined our image as three by three matrix. 
reshaped it and we defined our model as taking some input and then just upsampling layer. Let's apply this model onto our image. How do you do that? Well, it's just that model.predict, right? So we are predicting with this model onto our original image. So X is our input. So when you do that, let's go ahead and print out the original input is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We know that. And the upsampled, which is the output from from our other from our model dot predict is one one two two three three one one two two three three and uh, four four five five six six this is very similar to the red pink yellow boxes i showed you each one of those if one is the red box it's repeated four times this is upsampling that's it so this is how i go from an image that's smaller to a larger size as you can see this is not a great way of actually getting your original image resolution back right? I mean, you are losing image resolution here. This is exactly why in unit concatenation is very important from the earlier convolutional encoder layers, convolutional layers to the decoder layers. Okay. Now let's see how Con2D transpose actually works. Okay. So let's work on a similar, pretty much the same example, except instead of upsampling, I'm importing Con2D transpose here. Okay. So everything else is exactly the same. And then in my model, instead of upsampling, I'm going to use Con2D transpose. And let's use the same example I gave you earlier, which is one by one uh, kernel size and a stride of two by two. Now, this is important. When I put kernel initializer equal to once, that means it initializes all values in my kernel with a value of one. This is equivalent to the weight equals to one, which means if I have a uh, input image of this, it's going to multiply each value by one so our values don't change. We'll, we'll see the effect of this. Again, uh, I talked about kernel initializers in a video. Again, if you haven't watched that, I definitely recommend doing that. If you don't define this, then Keras is going to use a default way of initializing weights, which is, I believe, some normal distribution, random distribution, well, random initialization with some sort of a variance. Okay, so let's go ahead and define this model. And uh, one thing, okay, this is important to see. Now, my stride is a two by two and my kernel size is one by one, right? So this is the summary here. My output is going to be the size of six by six by one, exactly the same size as we, uh, if we upscaled it, exactly the same size because our Again, stride is, uh, sorry, our stride is two by two. That's exactly why we have 661. But the key point here is, see the number of parameters that are trained, trainable as part of our neural network training. It's two parameters, why? Look at the kernel size, one by one. What does that mean? There is one value that it's trying to learn. This is the weight. And the other one is the bias. Remember, artificial neuron, there is always a weight and a bias, right? So if there is one neuron, then you have two trainable parameters, one weight and one bias. That's exactly why you have two parameters right there. If I change my kernel to, I think it's a very educational exercise to do this, sorry, two by two, and then run this again, my number of parameters are going to be five. It's still six, six, because my strides are two by two, okay? Uh, but number of trainable parameters is five, why? because if it is two by two, how many do I have? How many weights? Four, right? Two by two. So I have four weights that the network needs to train during the training process plus one bias. For it, yeah, so, so you have four plus one, five. That's why you have five. So I guess uh, probably you know what to expect when you have three by three kernel, okay? Exactly. If you have three by three, that's nine, right? Nine plus one, 10 parameters. So let's go back to one by one. One by one is what we want. And let's go ahead and apply this. Okay. So this is where we are. And now let's apply that model.predict. I call this model one, right? Model one.predict on our input data. And let's go ahead and print out all the transposed and upsampled values right there. So my original input and the transposed, con2d transposed is, as we saw earlier, one zero two zero three and it's zero alternatively because again this is two by two stride okay if it is one by one stride then there won't be any zeros and you have values let's do one by one so when you do one by one that means your output shape is also three 
same as original input. So there's nothing changing right there. Let's also do one other thing. Let's remove the kernel initializer part and see how the output looks like. This part should look exactly the same. We're not changing anything, but when we apply that onto our image, we'll see some weird numbers right here. Why are we seeing these weird numbers? Because this is randomly initialized. The weights are no more one. So apparently the weights turned out to be 0.96 at that location. So one times 0.96 is 0.96. The weight here is somewhere around 0.8 something multiplied by two is what you get right here. Okay, so your weights are randomly generated between values of zero and one, and then multiplying by whatever you have here. And then you get this. This is why con 2D, I hope, I hope this explains the con 2D here. I'm initializing the kernel by once, so your output is going to look identical to input with extra spaces because we're just multiplying these with ones. Very great exercise, especially if you're new to this neural network topic. These little things will, will really provide a lot of insight into exactly what's going on when you do kernel initializer equal to he normal, for example. I think, or hey normal, if you, is that H -E, hey normal? I think that's how you spell it, yeah. And then when you, and then you see the weights right there. Yeah, you can define your original input as all ones to see how the distribution of weights happens. And then you can, that's, a, that's, that's just separate lecture by itself, right? So now you'll know uh, the importance of, uh, uh, you know, these distributions right there. Okay, so I at least hope uh, you know what uh, kernel initializer is doing in this case, but more importantly, what upsampling means and uh, what, oh, sorry. Let's run this so we can look at the same thing here. Okay, so at least now you know the difference between upsampling and CONV2D transposed. Normally, I, 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 I almost said I would use upsample, but lately I've been using uh, CONV2D transpose and I haven't seen any visible difference in the results uh, on, on, uh, on a handful of data sets that I worked with. But, at least it's important for you to know what the difference is and I hope this video achieves that task. Please go ahead and subscribe to this video and in the next one let's continue these discussions so eventually we build up enough knowledge to perform semantic segmentation on binary and multi-class and 3D multi-class uh, data sets. Thank you guys.